Use lockout tagout each time, every time, before entering bins or before performing service or maintenance on unloading equipment. This video is a quick reference to the OSHA standard 1910.147, Control of Hazardous Energy, commonly known as lockout tagout. Lockout tagout is a critical step before any bin entry or before maintenance or other service work on unloading equipment. While family farmers don't have to follow these standards, they're an industry best practice to keep you safe during bin entry and maintenance work. Grain system workers should always assess what controls need to be locked out before any work is done. Lockout tagout reduces injuries and fatalities associated with grain handling. It's an easy and inexpensive way to avoid hazards associated with flowing grain, entanglement, and electrocution. Lockout tagout consists of a few simple steps, uses a minimum amount of equipment, and is financially friendly. For less than the price of a family meal, you can be protected. First, prepare for the shutdown. Identify the equipment that will be shut down and notify all affected employees. Everyone in the area of the equipment needs to understand that the equipment will be out of service for a time. Next, disconnect the power source and place a lock and tag on it, one for each employee who will be entering a bin or servicing the equipment. You also need to be certain that all stored energy has been dissipated and any system feeding into the one you are going to work on is disabled. This includes systems that might dump grain or feed into a bin you plan to enter. After shutting off the discharge auger, shut off the leg that could dump grain into the bin. Locking out consists of placing a lock on the power source that is clearly identified by owner, recognized for lockout tagout use only and can't be confused with a security lock or other common padlock. Tagging out involves placing a tag identified by owner on the energy source to notify others it is locked out and non-functional. If multiple people are working on a piece of equipment or entering a bin, there should be one lock for each person. No person's key should open another person's lock. Next, try starting the equipment. If there are normally several ways to start it, try them all. This makes sure that you have successfully shut everything off. Enter the area and complete all maintenance or work. Under no circumstances should anyone attempt to remove the locks and energize the equipment. The person performing the maintenance is to have total control over the energy source. When the work is completed, remove tools and equipment and make sure all personnel have exited. Whoever initiated the lockout tagout procedure should ensure that this task is completed. Notify other workers in the area that work is completed and the equipment will once again be energized. Caution people to remain out of the vicinity of any danger should startup not occur properly. Each individual worker must remove his or her own padlock and tag from the energy source. This is another way to verify that all workers have exited safely. Start the machine and verify it is working normally. Remember these few simple steps for less than the price of a family meal. It's also helpful to store all locks and tags not being used in a central area. To establish good, consistent practices, it's best to place the lockout tagout equipment where workers see it on an everyday basis and it's easy to get to when needed. Use lockout tagout each time, every time, before entering bins or before performing service or maintenance on unloading equipment.